All right, I took a trip out to Whitewater, Wisconsin to visit the effigy mounds and um, found out quite a bit. And I visited a site with um, at least 12 effigy mounds or maybe one more, they're not sure. These mounds are supposed to be over 2,000 years old, built by the mound builders. Now, the mound builders are mysterious people. Um, it's said that um, when the settlers, uh, the, well, the latest settlers from Europe came over and asked the current inhabitants of the area who built the mounds, they didn't know. They didn't claim it as their own. So that is a big red flag to me that um, there was a different culture. And um, I know from some of the research I'm doing with the East Coast Native Americans, they were um, all the way into the Mississippian area and then pushed out. And they had a lot of different wars going on. Um, they may have been, uh, you know, quite a bit further, but... Um, some of my research, research shows that some of these Native Americans on the East Coast are uh, European, and that's another hidden thing. But getting back to this um, whitewater mounds, um, there are different mounds shaped in the size of uh, animals, and um, the way that the park is maintaining them, they're cutting the grass around the mounds, but letting it, everything grow up. So it's a little tough to see what the animal shape is, but um, there are some signs that give you a pretty good description. So I went around to some of the more interesting ones and read what the sign said. And um, as you go through the video, I, I ended up finding a, a feather, which I think may come from a, a red hawk, uh, red tail hawk. I'm not uh, sure, I'm, you know, I'm not an expert in that, but I found that right before I went to the um, Eagle Mound, uh, well, they called Eagle or Thunderbird, I'm not sure. And um, another interesting thing is they talk about um, a great turtle that came up when they uh, lost their land and it carried them to dry land. So right there is another red flag, and that smacks of Atlantis and the, or Lemuria and the sinking of those islands. So those are um, some, t you know, those are two red flags. The the other thing is, if you when you get into this video, you'll see that they carried dirt that was sacred to bring to these burial mounds, and it didn't. They don't know where the dirt came from. That's a third red flag, and I'm going to bet it came from their ancestral home and that they would put it in this mound. So I think we hear, have another mystery here of who truly were these mound builders. And I am going to relate it back to Europe. Uh, the Amazons built mounds. And when I get into another video about the Amazons, I'm going to tell you about how they were co coerced by the Atlanteans who were uh, in that area to fight these Gorgon women. And they got into a big war and pretty much annihilated each other. And their leader was named Myrena. Now, isn't that interesting because it sounds like Xena, <clears throat> but it's not. Now, Myrena, after her warriors were killed, it's said uh, by Diodorus Siculus, and I'll quote it, it just says, Marina accorded a funeral to her fallen comrades on three um, pyres and raised up three great heaps of earth as tombs, which are called to this day Amazon mounds. So they were using mounds, and then um, uh, effigies and um, effigy mounds and, and burial mounds are all over Europe. They're up in uh, Sweden at Gamla Uppsala, and I believe, uh, based on my research, Apollo and Artemis and Zeus went up there, and they would be known as the Nordic gods. Um, um, Odin would be Zeus, and um, Apollo would be Freyr, and Ap Artemis would be Freyja. 
and um, when Zeus, Odin died, they cremated him. So you'll never find a mound or a body for him. They cremated all of his stuff. But um, Apollo created the um, king line that went into Norway, and it's it's called the Ingling. It's it's um, I believe it's spelled Y um, N L I N G. I got to double check that, but it, it came from him. He created a kingship line. And in the uh, Hemskringla, the whole uh, history of that kingship line is discussed. And Artemis married a man up there and had some children with him. But they um, created burial mounds for him at that Gamla Uppsala. So those are still there. And then the kings would get buried and they, the, the kingship line spread out across that area. But... Um, these mounds go back to the Amazons and Europeans, um, as well as effigies. So just telling you the three flags that I discovered right off the bat at going to these whitewater mounds. So let's uh, transition now into the video. There may be some audio differences, so be prepared to change the volume. Okay. Okay, I'm at the uh, Whitewater Indian Mounds Park, and there's supposed to be at least 12 mounds and uh, many effigies, so we're going to see what we can find. Let me just take a quick look and show you some of the entrance as I come in. Okay, this is another mound. I've got um, two here. Let's see what this one's called. <clears throat> this is a conical mound. The other one was um, a mink mound. Okay, so very nice place. Some benches that you could sit uh, and rest. I just passed two mounds. A lot of trees. This place is supposed to be 22 acres. There's a cornfield next to it and houses that they've preserved the area. So it's an ancient cemetery of the mound builders <coughs> um, that I'm coming through. And we're coming up to another mound. And some of these are in the shape of an animal. Some are just conical or different shapes. So we're going to see what this one is. Oh, this is cool. I got a little feather hair. Let's take a look at that. Ah, cool. Okay. Pretty cool. I don't know what that's from, but I think we'll, we'll see. Okay, so, uh, uh, this is a bird mound. Okay, <clears throat> effigy mound um, is more commonly called the native. And interesting, I just found this feather as I went to the bird mound. Uh, is called the native uh, called by Native Americans the eagle or thunderbird mound. The eagle is the most powerful and largest raptor or carnivorous bird in the area. It is a welcome presence at Native American gatherings. One story told how the eagle saved the people from themselves. The Great Spirit wasn't happy with the people. They were acting in ways that weren't respectful to him or other people and animals around them. He was so angry that he was going to do away with the people for their behavior. But the people were speared by the actions of the eagle. The eagle stood up in front of the great spirit and told him of people who were respectful and honoring the old ways. The great spirit commanded the eagle to fly around the world in the light just before dawn to find someone who is honoring the great spirit and the old ways. And if the eagle found some, the great spirit would allow the sun to rise. 
This is one reason of at Native American gatherings they perform a sunrise ceremony. These stories were passed on to generations of children. The mounds have been a place to bury, join clans, give directions, and educate. So I'm at Bird Mound, and my this feather just was in my path on the way here, right before it. So interesting coincidence. I'm gonna back up, and I'm gonna get a little assistance to see if I could do a um, drone fly. Over here by the um, bird mound is Turtle Mound, and it says this is another effigy mound believed to be the shape of a turtle. To the Native American people, the turtle was a, sw a strong symbol. The turtle's shell was hard like armor, and it could swim very well. One story told of a great flood which the people were suffering. As the tribe climbed to a higher ground to escape the high, uh, rising waters, it became dark. Sometime uh, during the middle of the night, after many hours and days of climbing, the waters stopped rising. The people fell asleep, exhausted from their ordeal. When they awoke in the morning, they found that the water had not stopped rising, but in fact, they had climbed onto to, to the back of an immense turtle. The turtle had carried the people and saved them from drowning in the flood. These mounds are sacred to the Native Americans for many reasons. They may contain burial of all type, from human remains and ashes, to sacred objects and treaty exchanges. The most fascinating fact is that the soil that makes up the mound is sacred, having been brought here to make each mound. The soil was carried here in baskets or blankets from other sacred places. Since domesticated horses weren't introduced to this continent until the 1500s, the soil was carried by hand. So that's interesting that they brought the sacred soil and they felt that there was something that they climbed up on to um, escape the flooding waters that carried them to dry land. And they called it a giant turtle. Now that's rather interesting. What was it? So here we are. And uh, let's we'll see if we can get some flight over this one too. Okay, and this is, uh, in, I believe this is in front of this eagle mound. And there's some trees in it and everything. Okay. This is another conical mound. I'm going to go down a little bit more and uh, we have another mound over here by that interesting tree configuration so we're gonna walk a little bit I'm gonna shut this off for a few minutes I still have my gift for coming I know this is them to remember these old ones if I could shed light on who you were I will try and do so we're not forgetting so uh, we have a few more mounds over this way, and uh, I don't see any of the markers, so I'm not sure what these are going to be. Oh, here's one. What this one's going to be. Let's see. Beautiful wildflowers. Okay, this is another bird mound. Oh, interesting. Okay, the effigy mound is known as a bird type. Um, this mound is unique in that the wings of the bird are swept back along the body. Most of the bird mounds found in Wisconsin have the wings um, stretched out to 90 degrees angle uh, to the bird's body. The other bird mound found in this group, site number 10, is of the more commonly found type. As you look south, you can clearly see the left your right wing of the bird near the pathway. The right wing, your left, of the bird is cut short. The rest of the wing is outside the property boundary and was flattened when that land was a farm field. The head is completely lost and has been for some time. Charles Brown, when surveying um, this group, did not find the head. The mound group was remembered 1989, there are two measurements. One's a Brown survey and the other's the John, John's 
stake stake survey. One was 1920, one was 1989. Okay, so this is another bird mound. Let me back it up, but the head's gone, but it has wings. So you can kind of, I'll back it up a little more so you can kind of see it. Yeah, definitely I can see some of the wing shape. Most definitely. And that the other one is cut. So I'm gonna shut this off for a second. Okay, so I'm just going around this bird mound so you can see how big it is. And uh, it's pretty long. A lot of trees. Now this park is uh, supposed to go 22 acres. I'm not gonna make the whole thing today, but um, you can see that it really goes out there. And this is probably the rest of this bird mound. Quite a bit. Anyway, look at how long that thing goes. All the way down. Okay? So that must be the tail of this bird mound. I don't know what's in it. I don't know if it's been excavated. Now there may be a few more mounds down that way. I'm not sure. I may venture out a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna shut off for a minute and go to this last mound. Okay, this is a mink mound. And it gets its name from the resemblance uh, to the long short-legged rodent. We don't know what the Native Americans called it. Some mink mounds have gender differences. This is an example of a male type uh, mink mound. This is extra outward projection. Just behind the mound's hind legs, this is the largest mound in this group. It was, it was measured at 347 feet long in 1920, which is longer than a traditional American football field. Other large uh, effigy mounds in this area include a flock of three large eagle mounds with the largest wingspan over 912 feet. The largest eagle mound has been bordered near Richard Center, Wisconsin with a wingspan of over 1,500 feet. The mink mound was uh, measured in 1989 and it had shrunk to 280 feet long. The original measurements taken by the Brown Survey were um, the body was 172 feet and the tail 176 feet. Okay, and this one really goes back. I'm getting into this cooler area. I'm maybe at the end of the mounds, the effigy mounds. Um, this is a welcome relief for a few minutes out of the sun. I'm a little hot today. Um, pretty, a lot of trees. And uh, I really don't know how far this goes other than what I read online, 22 acres. I'm not sure if down here is still part of it or not. I do see some signs. I'll just take a quick look. And then I do see the road um, off a bit. So I may be at the end. I'm sure this goes a little bit more, but um, I know for sure I didn't walk 22 acres, but um, I'm sure the acreage also includes the the tree area that's pretty solid and uh, not walkable. I'm just on the walking path, which has you know these mounds. So very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna shut off until I get to that sign. Yeah, I'm at the end. I believe this was the beginning. I think I just did a big circle. So it says. Um, Welcome to Whitehead's Indian uh, Mounds Park. <clears throat> As you, the town people, please remember that this is a special place, a, sa a sacred place, as sacred as any church or cemetery that you may have visited before. To the Native Americans, this can be their church, and this is their cemetery. This is also their city hall, their school, and their archives or library. All the activities we do in, in the places named above were done here. Children were told stories of the mound shapes and what the mound honored. The treaties that bound tribes together were farmed and sailed here. Tribal ancestors were buried and honored here, which links the present to the past in their oral traditions. 
Native Americans held ceremonies here praying to the Great Spirit, honoring him and thanking him for the gifts he gave them. Remember that these things as you journey through the park. Please don't walk on the mounds. Okay, continues on. The mounds are old and fragile. You would be too at almost 2,000 years old. Okay, I do. Um, thank you for letting me visit and telling the story. 